So in the previous video, we went ahead and created a very easy program. And in this video, I want to discuss variables, how we can use them and what they are. So let's get started immediately. To get started, I'm going to create an example called website, and that's going to equal facebook.com, for example. As you can see right here, we just created a variable by first giving it a name, then providing an equal sign and the element that we want to assign to it. So a variable just holds a reference essentially to whatever you want it to hold. So we can also type in something such as answer and the answer is going to equal 12 plus 39. And now if we go ahead and print the answer, we can refer to it because we created a variable and it holds a reference to whatever happens over here. So if we go ahead and type in answer and run the program, the computer is going to print out 51. And the same thing goes for Facebook. So we can go ahead and type in website and it's going to print the website down here because this variable is holding the reference to facebook.com. So these two are exactly the same. And you might be asking, why would we create variables when we can just go ahead and print out facebook.com down here? Well, this is going to be considered bad practice because it's not reusable. If we use a variable, we might want to use it later, which means we can print it here. And now if we want to use it again, we don't have to type in facebook.com again, we can just type in website. So now we have facebook.com printed twice. And maybe that doesn't convince you yet, but pretend you want to change facebook.com to a different website. Now that's when it becomes a problem, because if you have facebook.com written here and facebook.com written here like this, now it's going to take a lot of time to change it to apple.com. You can't just change it that fast. So in programming, it's very important that you make elements as reusable as possible. So now we can go ahead and type in apple.com and it's going to update both of them. So variables are very important because they help us save time with renaming and reusing our code. And one more thing to cover is that there are some naming conventions in Python. You don't have to worry about memorizing these because you are going to see them naturally. In general, in Python, whenever you create a variable, you're going to want to write them in what they call snake case, which means if it is more than one word, you're going to add an underscore between each word. So for example, we can go ahead and create a variable called total money, and that's going to equal 100. And as you can see there, I added an underscore. And this just makes it easy to read. It's a naming convention. Of course, you can do it any way you want. You can also go total money. And this is more popular in languages such as Java and JavaScript. And you can also do it in capital letters. Although it's not recommended you do this for normal variables. This is usually reserved for what they call constants. And constants are supposed to be values that never change. So you should reserve it for that. But of course, you're welcome to name your code however you want. It's only important for other people to read your code so they can easily read it. And that's the only reason to follow naming conventions. It's so other people can read your code easier. Then we can go ahead and print out total money. And there we go, 51, apple.com and 100. So that just about covers what variables are. In the next video, we're going to go ahead and talk about the Python data types.